the first rule of conservation is that collaboration is the best way to go. Yellowstone was one of the first UNESCO World Heritage Sites. It represents that moment when we decided to protect nature for the collective good. Here on the north rim of the Yellowstone Grand Canyon, you can see how the park got its name, plus a whole bunch of other wonderful colors. It is a dazzling landscape. And it's also an incredibly marvelous place ecologically, so it's more than beautiful, it's also magical in terms of its ecological interactions. Wolves were well established in Yellowstone when the park was designated in 1872. They are arguably one of the most controversial forms of wildlife on the planet. And we've been at odds with them, certainly over agriculture and now over hunting for a long time. They are this cultural enigma to us. We killed them every chance we got. And it's only been in the last three or four decades that there's been a movement of people to say, Maybe they're not so bad. The restoration of the wolf uh, after a 70 year absence is, is truly a phenomenal event. And now in our 15th year, we see a very robust, healthy wolf population acting uh, in this system much like it would have thousands of years ago. Wolf restoration has uh, really improved the biodiversity of this region. Uh, we think with this top predator back on the landscape, uh, we're seeing an impact uh, across a large scale of food chain levels. We went from 31 wolves to over 300 in the first 10 years, where there are three to four times as many wolves and as many packs outside of Yellowstone Park as there are inside. You have to look at the impacts of that on the productivity of elk, which are the primary prey species of wolves, productivity of the vegetation. And aspen is like ice cream to elk. It's a favored food. But with the introduction of wolves, the elk population behavior has changed. So what we've got now is this opportunity for some of these uh, smaller aspen to get above the, the browsing height of an elk. These aspens have a very good chance of replacing these, uh, these older aspens that are now dying out. Through IUCN's World Commission on Protected Areas, we've been able to assemble a group of people and organizations from around the world who are interested in connectivity conservation. The story of Yellowstone's wolves is not only the story of Yellowstone Park, it's also an example of the bigger issue of how parks need to be part of landscapes that are much bigger. They need to be connected. Large carnivores on the landscape are something when we didn't have 300 million people living in the United States. Wildlife now, in this day and age, lives in fragmented landscapes. It's very rare to find continuous suitable habitat anywhere. We can't have these islands. The islands become isolated and the genetics and other things fade. One of the big questions about the recovery of wolves is to what degree uh, are these uh, populations connected genetically, physically? And so part of our research is trying to understand the degree to which wolves move around the landscape, uh, reproduce and, and contribute to gene flow. Yellowstone actually can't function as an island. It actually needs to be part of a bigger system that goes from Yellowstone all the way up into the Yukon in northern Canada. We have to think at that scale, connecting these reserves, not allowing them to become little island fortresses, or they will become islands of extinction. And that large scale of conservation is sometimes called connectivity conservation. We need these large networks uh, of wild habitat to support these animals and ensure their future. Wolves are very much a symbol of wilderness. Uh, they're a symbol of something that uh, was very much a part of our wildlife heritage in the past, uh, very much of, uh, a symbol of what we have lost, but more importantly, a symbol of what we now have gained. A large part of the success of Yellowstone wolves has been 
uh, the bringing together of, of people. That's really a testament uh, to, the, to the value that human societies play and that coming together, working in different organizations uh, to achieve a common goal. Are we gonna save some places? Wolves are a great test for that mindset. Can we do it? Can we bring them back? And not just to settle landscapes, but let them exist in those wild places.